Hi, my name is Austin, and this is a no BS approach to some daily finance news. Today, we're going to be starting off to cover some recently released data for U.S. inflation. According to the Labor Department, U.S. inflation eased to 5% in March from a year earlier, its lowest level in the last two years. However, underlying price pressures remained elevated despite the Federal Reserve's campaign to try to slow down inflation and keep prices from rising as they've been doing so quickly in here in the past. Core inflation, which economists say is a better predictor of future inflation, has stayed stubbornly high in part because of inflationary pressures from sheltering costs. It's not going to move the needle for the Fed, and inflation problem isn't getting solved by itself. And it needs higher unemployment to get there, said Steve Blitz, a chief U.S. economist at T.S. Lombard. The Federal Reserve has been raising interest rates nine times over the past two years to try to cool off the economy and slow down inflation, which inflation shot up as the economy rebounded from the pandemic during supply chain disruptions and labor shortages. However, the economy has shown some signs of slowing down and even tightening lending following the two recent mid-sized bank failures. I'm sure you're familiar with SVB and Silvergate. However, the economy has shown recent signs of slowing. Many economists, including Mr. Blitz, expect the U.S. to fall into a recession later this year. As inflation is eating into overall sales, consumers spend more on essential items. I mean, this comes as last year as everyone was spending way more at the grocery store. So, I know we've heard of prices of eggs being up, meats being up, but I just want to hear from you. Do you think that you've seen inflation come down over this past month? Do you see food prices at your local grocery store? Are they cheaper than they once were? This data shows that although inflation rates are easing, the economy is not out of the woods yet, and the Federal Reserve will need to continue to take necessary measures to control inflation and ensure a stable economic future for the U.S. To me, it looks like a recession is coming whether we like it or not. It's at the point where I'm just wondering how severe of the recession it might be. It'll be interesting to see what the Federal Reserve will do with this information because right now they are most likely deciding on whether they should increase interest rates or not. I think the data is good, but it may not be good enough to ease off the gas pedal yet as far as inflation, so we're still far, far away from that target goal of 2% inflation the Federal Reserve has set for us. Our next story is about Walmart, the country's largest retailer by revenue, closing four stores in Chicago after earlier closing several others in urban locations. According to Walmart, collectively, our Chicago stores have not been profitable since we've opened them nearly 17 years ago. These stores lose tens of millions of dollars every year, and their annual losses nearly doubled in just the last five years. Walmart is keeping four Chicago stores open, and it's their hope that these closures will help keep those open for a longer term than, you know, the other stores that are closing right now. This pullback in urban stores is significant because Walmart has tried for years to find a profitable way to do business in those markets, seeing them as an opportunity to grow beyond the base of shoppers in suburban, smaller towns, and rural areas, not really as a charity, but in a way to increase market share even though it's at a loss. Basically, they are thinking how to even break even at this point. They still want to spread the benefits of their brand, but it's not looking like they're very close to being profitable at all. However, top executives have debated how to grow inside these urban centers profitably for decades. One sticking point has been that some top executives, including Chief Executive Doug McMillan, believe that product prices should be largely the same at every Walmart store, regardless of location. That stance is in part why Walmart has never opened any stores in New York City. Many other retailers have expanded into these urban areas, and Target is one of the big ones. They charge different prices for some products depending on the cost of doing business in that region and the competitive landscape that makes up you know, that area. The closure sparked criticism from Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot. I'm incredibly disappointed that Walmart, a strong partner in the past, has announced the closing of several locations. She said, unceremoniously, abandoning these neighborhoods will create barriers to basic needs for thousands of residents. And Walmart has reported strong sales throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. In recent quarters, as shoppers were pressured by high prices from inflation, they turned to Walmart for essential goods and groceries. As of January 31st, the company operated more than 47 100 Walmart stores in the U.S. and employed 1.6 million people across its locations. This includes Walmart and Sam's Clubs and its distribution centers. So far this year, Walmart has announced plans to close 19 stores total, with some of those happening in the largest of cities. This comes as Walmart is closing its stores in Seattle due to crime. People suspect the same reason for Chicago, but it's interesting to see that these stores were actually nowhere near profitable, and that's why they're being closed. The next story, investing legend Warren Buffett believes that there could be more bank failures down the road, but depositors shouldn't be worried. We're not over bank failures, but depositors haven't had a crisis, said Buffett in 
a recent interview with the CNBC. Banks go bust, but depositors aren't going to be hurt. Buffett's comments come after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank last month, which prompted extraordinary rescue actions from regulators. However, Buffett believes that unnecessary fear and panic about depositors losing their money is unwarranted. The cost of FDIC insurance are borne by the banks. Banks have never cost the federal government a dime. The public doesn't understand that, he said. Nobody is going to lose money on a deposit on a US bank. It's not going to happen. You don't need to turn a dumb decision by managers into panicking the whole citizenry of the United States about something they don't need to be panicked about. Buffett has been a white knight for troubled banks in the past, famously injecting $5 billion into Goldman Sachs after the collapse of the Lehman Brothers in 2008 and injecting the same amount into Bank of America in 2011. Now, Buffett is definitely one to pay attention to as possibly one of the greatest investors of all time. I don't necessarily agree that everyone's money is absolutely safe. Remember the Treasury Secretary of the US said that there would not be any bailing out of the banks and alluding to people's money may not even be safe. Personally, me, yeah, me, Austin, I would consider moving my money to a bigger bank. Bigger banks are safer, they have more restrictions, and ultimately they have more eyes on them at the end of the day. It's the small banks that are vulnerable and Buffett is warning us about. And that's it for today's finance news. Stay tuned to tomorrow's report as I continue to bring the latest developments in the world of finance. Thank you for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.